Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, yes, this is a small project uh, that we run uh, in order to face these issues that is affecting Lake Lugano. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce what algal blooms are. Maybe uh, it's better because algal blooms are basically an ab abnormal growth of <laughs> algae in lakes. We, uh, cause it, there are different causes like uh, an excess of phosphorus and nitrogen, so an excess of nutrients coming from uh, uh, farming, coming from agriculture, uh, use, using a fertilizer and so on. Then there are also industry that can take water from lake and ingest some chemicals. Uh, then there are cities, we have to think about uh, residential sewer, and then there are also heavy uh, rain events uh, which can increase the loads uh, of nutrients inside the lake. Another factor is the increment of the water temperature. We are in a, in a world affected by climate changes, so also the water temperature is increasing. You have to think that uh, last summer in, on Lake Lugano we reached a temperature, or so face tem water temperature of around 29 and some uh, um, cyanobacteria which can produce cyanotoxins uh, can grow with a temperature uh, above 24 degrees. And uh, which are the effects of these algal blooms? Uh, uh, they, can, they have effects on human health, they have effects on ecosystem, of economics. Uh, so the, these are a phenomenon that we have to face uh, for, different, uh, for these reasons. The study area is the Lake Lugano. Uh, we can speak uh, uh, Lake Lugano as uh, two lakes because there is this morenic deposit in uh, Melide. Upon that, uh, it, it has been built the bridge. Uh, the north basin has a, a maximum depth of around 300 meters. The south basin has a maximum depth of 90 meters. And they have a, a, a quite different uh, behavior. This is the situation during last summer in some Lidos. So, uh, it was quite critical. It, it has the, the first time that we have uh, uh, so uh, huge events. Uh, and so oh, many newspapers speak about this, uh, e either local and national newspaper, newspaper raise the awareness of citizens. Uh, also because the lake uh, is a very important source for economic. We have to think that uh, here there are many companies for navigation, there are many Lidos. Uh, uh, also the, the water of the lake is used uh, for drinkable uh, uh, usage. Uh, in fact, there are captions at 30-40 meter depth to catch water to, uh, from the lake and uh, get them to the uh, residential houses. Uh, Lake Lugano, uh, of course, is affected by these uh, two uh, elements, climate change plus uh, human activities, uh, which are causing unknown dynamics, uh, which have to be studied, and so also there is a need of monitoring. The lake is an recovery status because from the 70s there are many mitigation actions that uh, recover its health, but uh, now we are reached somehow a stagnation, uh, probably due to the climate change effects, the rise of the temperature are uh, uh, doing negative feedbacks on this recovering uh, um, status. So what we have done, basically we have built a simple uh, device composed by a control unit and a sensor. We put, them, we put it in the Riva San Vitale, which is a Lido, is one of the most affected area from this phenomenon. And uh, the sensor, uh, we, put, we put it in the, at the surface. Uh, how it is built, this uh, this system basically is composed by these elements. First of all, a three lux sensor for Chelsea te from Chelsea Technologies to measure algal pigments. It is a fluorimeter of, with a cost of around 2,600 uh, francs. Then there is a microcontroller unit. We use the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Pre-COVID, it has a cost of around 40, but now I think it's 60, 70, I don't know. Uh, then I put also the cable <laughs> because uh, you can see that uh, it's 
why is it quite expensive for 400 francs for a cable of five meter why we use it because uh, it should be water resistant it, it should be weather resistant since the system is working on a, in a harsh environment and so to produce good quality of data we need a, a good quick cable also then there is a power module uh, just to uh, convert the current from 12 to 5 volts with a cost of 7 francs. Um, why we use it? Because uh, 12 volts is, is the, usually the voltage that, that power up a professional sensor like the Trilux. But 5 volts is usually the uh, voltage used by, for example, the Raspberry from the microcontroller. controller. Then there is the power module uh, to, for data transmission. We use MDIoT. Uh, we chose the, micro, the module for micro ray company. Why? Because uh, it's quite interesting because this company um, use the same bus for many modules. So you can, what does it mean? It means it has a cost of 70 francs. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if you would like to change the module and uh, use, for example, LoRa or Wi-Fi or other uh, transmission uh, mode, you can just change the module, but without, without changing the connections. Then uh, other 350 francs for miscellaneous, like metal box, cables, terminator, for a total budget of 3,500 3, francs. This is quite expensive, it could, it could be, but we have to think that if we would like to buy such a system from a company, it can be also much more expensive. Uh, this slide is just to understand better how uh, is the data flows at the device side. Basically, we chose to uh, uh, put there a Raspberry Pi instead to have more power. Uh, so we could install inside the ASOS software, which is a Python implementation of the uh, SOS standard. Instead to have a data log, a data log that, that can speak SOS. So we would like to try uh, if it is something feasib feasible and also useful. Uh, the data flow is like that. So every minute we have uh, uh, every minute we have uh, uh, data read from the sensor. There is a quality control test. Then data are inserted into its source with the flags that can say if the data is uh, the value is good or not. Then every 10 minutes. Uh, everything at the device side, um, data are, uh, are aggregated, other tests are run, and then the data are transmitted to ESOS, the server side, at the server side through MBIoT and MQTT pro protocol. Then there is an orchestrator which is subscribed to a topic, and so the orchestrator can ingest the data into the ESOS. Uh, here, just to say that uh, uh, the software that we developed for the device is uh, available on this repository. Uh, I think that maybe the most interesting part, if, you, uh, if I can say this, it's inside the folder module where there are some drivers that we have written to speak with some commercial sensor like loop stations, like Chelsea technology sensor, or for uh, Poncel sensor, and so on. Then there are other scripts, uh, and uh, you, if you are interested, you just uh, have a look inside this repository. And here there is the um, server-side architecture. Everything is uh, uh, powered up by Docker Compose. Uh, there are different services. Basically, when a request comes to our servers, uh, there is an orchestrator which asks to the authentication server if uh, the client is authorized or not. If yes, the request will go, for example, to its source, which is the general data management that we chose. Inside this architecture, we would like also to test uh, uh, Grafana. Uh, Grafana, I think um, many of you know uh, uh, something about this software, and we use it for graph and dashboard generator, but also for the alarm notification service. Uh, we, we chose to, uh, to have a look into Grafana inside this project because it is a small project, so we would like to understand if, he, if it has the, if it, uh, if it respects our requirements, so if uh, also in a productive environment can be useful for us. 
Uh, also, uh, this architecture, uh, there is a repository, and you can have a look, it's uh, public uh, available. There is, uh, uh, please have a look into the prod uh, branch uh, where you can power up the system with the Docker Compose after maybe changing some parameters inside the .m files. Uh, and now some results. Um, we collect data for uh, more than one year. The system is running still uh, now, uh, but uh, in this presentation, uh, I concentrate, I focused on just one year from the 2023 March uh, till March 2024. We expected to collect uh, 52,000 observations, but just 41 have been flagged uh, as good data, which constitutes uh, a 78% of the expected data set. It, this uh, uh, percentage could seem uh, quite low, but for us uh, it's a quite interesting result because we are not measuring air temperature, which is a quite easy parameter to measure, but we are measuring uh, algal pigments concentration with a fluorimeter. So there are many bias that can happen, for example, a, a fish that can swim uh, near the sensor or uh, uh, the solar uh, reflection which go inside the uh, the fluorimeter and create other biases. Um, I put here this slide to speak also about the Simili project where, where we uh, firstly build something similar but more in a more complex way. In this project, we just uh, um, create a platform in the middle of the Lake Lugano to measure many parameters with a chain of sensors. Uh, and with this project, we just uh, replicate this system, but in a smaller, uh, in a smaller uh, device, with a smaller device. If you would like to know more, please, uh, uh, check our uh, publication, our article, where there are more details. Uh, after collecting data, we start the, anal the analysis. Uh, we just define some threshold in order to understand uh, which, uh, if there is a bloom or not. Uh, we identify just three uh, classes. The first one is the monitoring, where the fico chan in uh, concentration should be more than 3.4 uh, micrograms per liter, but also this value should be greater than the uh, chlorophyll one. In fact, uh, sorry, but I can go um, uh, print the previous slides. Here you can see that usually the chlorophyll is higher than the fico that the fico chanin concentration expect during some, uh, some periods where there are algal blooms. Uh, then there is, uh, in the monitoring phase, we just have to wait and monitor the situation in order to understand if uh, there is the possibility for a bloom. Then there is uh, the alert uh, threshold where the fico should be greater than 6.7 uh, micrograms per liter. This, uh, it means that there is an abundant growth of uh, cyanobacteria and so there is the need of a site inspection. Uh, the last uh, threshold is the ban, where the fico in concentration should be greater than 13.4. Here we have a critical situation. We have to uh, take water samples and understand if inside there are some uh, um, particular species of cyanobacteria, for example, microcystis, which can produce uh, cyanotoxins. Uh, we can do it with sensor. We, in this situation, we just have to take water sample and analyze them in laboratory to understand if there are uh, dangerous species or not. Uh, how, and now some a slide just to understand better how the alarm's workflow uh, works. Uh, basically, there is a string, every, as I said, every 10 or 15 minutes, I don't remember, that is, is sent to the server. The string is like this. There is a date time, there is the value of the chlorophyll, a flag, which identifies if this value is good or not, another value uh, for the fico concentration with its uh, flag, and then the last one, which is fico erythrin, but we don't... Uh, uh, we, we are not interested in this parameter. 
Then this value string goes inside the server in, into the three lux rev procedure managed by the ISOS, and then there is a list and notify system uh, using the um, PostgreSQL, which can fire the, an aggregation process which will um, aggregate the 10 minutes time series to one hour, to one hour time series. Uh, such data are then collected inside a new procedure, and this procedure will be used by Grafana in order to create alarms and create a dashboard after setting, of course, rules and uh, notifications. Uh, this is the dashboard that, that we usually um, used to share the data with our stakeholders, which, uh, which are mainly the uh, cantonal office for uh, water uh, supply. And um, here you can see that uh, there are the three main classes, and you can see also in 2023 how many times, uh, the image is not so good, but how many times uh, the, the values are uh, over the, in, in, the bind, in the bind classes. Uh, here there is a little bit of a, a more an analysis. Uh, we just measure how many times the value are inside, uh, uh, for example, the monitoring classing, and uh, it happened uh, 100 times. In the alert uh, class, it happened uh, 900 times, and the bank class, uh, it happened 600 times. But basically, we uh, we analyze, uh, we, we face just three main events, one in uh, uh, June, one in go August, which is the, uh, the huge one, and, and, and then the third in September. Here there are also three different images for the three different events. Uh, of course, uh, it's true that we don't uh, fire an alarm, we don't send a notification every time that uh, a value passed a, a, a class. But of course, there is a management in the, in the notification in order to not stress the stakeholders with too many mails. Uh, now some uh, conclusions. Uh, First of all, uh, we test the replicability of the system that we create in Simile, in the Simile project, and uh, it, I can say that uh, we have a successful result. We have also promising results, uh, which uh, can bring us in producing more sensor for the lake, in uh, maybe making some geospatial analysis, putting more sensor on the, on the leaders. And also it's very useful to have sensor in order to validate satellite images because we know that uh, uh, some parameter like chlorophyll A concentration can be calculated from uh, satellite images. But we need to validate this data. Then uh, there is also the possibility possibility to work with uh, a citizen science approach because uh, we, uh, uh, we see that there is a lot of interest in the uh, people that are managing, for example, Lidos and uh, navigation company. Uh, so they would like to have uh, something like a kit or a system very similar to that one that I show you to understand better uh, the status of the lake in order to better manage the client's requests. Uh, and then there are some negative points for our point of view. Uh, first of all, Grafana, in our situation, it's a very good tool to provide easily dashboard to create, to create e in an easy way notification. But when you have to create some uh, complex system, it has some, I, I see that it has some limits. Uh, then, uh, of course, we need a, no, a more suitable standard because we tried to, to put uh, uh, its source on the, at the device to have a data logger which is SOS compliant, but SOS uh, is uh, very verbose, uh, so actually the device cannot speak SOS. It's impossible because we have to reduce energy and reduce the load of the body. Uh, and then another thing that I would like to, to, to highlight uh, is uh, about the data quality controls and the maintenance activities, which are the key 
to have uh, uh, a successful data set. Uh, we can put, with IoT, we can put in the environment many, uh, many sensors, but the, the, this data should be of good quality, otherwise uh, are uh, useless. Uh, why I speak about maintenance? Because in uh, using fluorimeter in the lake, there are many issues for about the fouling, uh, the fouling effect where a biofilm can, uh, can grow, grow uh, over the surface of the sensor, affecting the measurements. And also there is another effect, uh, another effect of, uh, called the quenching, where the solar light can reduce the concentration that is measured by this sensor. So there is the need of monitoring and there is also the need of a technician that can look at the data and understand better what they uh, really say. Uh, some fu future developments, uh, I speak about notification. We tried uh, Grafana and we understand that we did something uh, that is uh, more uh, uh, more suitable for IR requirements. So I don't want to uh, speak about this uh, in, in depth to in these slides, but uh, making notification, we, we figure out that it's quite, uh, uh, it's not so easy. So we are creating uh, from scratch a software that will manage uh, these notifications. And uh, the last uh, slide, I think, uh, maybe, it's about uh, our, new, uh, our new implementation. I speak about uh, ISOS. I said that uh, a device can't speak really SOS. So we are uh, really near to release our first release of, of East STA, which is a client implementation of the Sensor Things API. We already passed all the uh, test from the Open Geospatial Consortium Validator, and we are just uh, uh, reviewing our environment, uh, uh, making it suitable for uh, a new approach, event-based. So everything will be an event, which will fire services, uh, and which will fire notification, which will fire quality analysis on the data, which will fire processes, and so on. Um, thank you. Thanks, Daniele. Any question? Uh, would you please, uh, I am Sultan from Saudi Arabia. Would you please go to the last three slides, the conclusion one? So, sorry, but uh, yeah, go go more, uh, and also also one for yes. When you sit here, uh, Grafana is not enough to manage complex uh, notification system. Yeah. Uh, do you mean you need more sensor, or can you give example? Can can you do in this uh, uh, system model you are providing in real time monitoring in day and night for the lake? Okay, if. Uh, I will try to understand uh, what uh, you, because the sound is really bad here. Yeah, no, my, my, <laughs> my precise point is real-time monitoring. Okay. Um, gra we use Grafana to fire... No ah, re real-time monitoring, I mean... Real-time notification. Uh, real-time monitoring, yes. Yeah. We use Grafana to fire real-time notification, but we figure out that... Okay, you can do it, of course. It's a very good software. But when you have a different kind of stakeholders, you have many sensors on, uh, on the network, maybe you will have to uh, create groups of people that are interested in having some uh, alerts on a set of uh, sensors instead of uh, all the network. No? So we figure out that it's not so easy. Uh, also, it, also it's, uh, it's good to have, uh, uh, here, I, I, I put uh, here something. When you fire an alert, then you have to wait uh, instead of uh, uh, stressing the stakeholder with the emails. It's not an easy, uh, an easy thing, to, an easy thing to, 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 um, to elaborate, to create. So, I think that the Grafana can be used effectively uh, in a team, maybe managing some small services, okay, it will be a good choice. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. We're trying, 
we try the other microphone. <laughs> Please try to keep it a bit far away from the mouth. Maybe we, we maximize the... Okay, uh, I'll, I'll try. Um, you, you mentioned that there are some professional, like, uh, off-the-shelf sensors that do similar things. Do you think it's, it's hard to connect, or do they speak like similar protocols? Do you, is, there, is there a way to integrate them? Because I, I imagine citizen science and, and building them, you, you might struggle from, from quality issues. So, so is there a way to, to implement com like commercially available sensors in this as well? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, Alors, if you if you if you speak just about sensors, it's a really uh, a difficult task because a fluorimeter having a professional fluorimeter, it's not so easy to implement. But if you speak about all the system, all the device, we are writing uh, right now a project in order to. Uh, get some funds uh, and make something that is uh, uh, that ca can be sold. Yeah. Thank you. O of course, uh, maintaining the open source approach. So, that, what does it mean? Open hardware, releasing the hardware with uh, an open hardware license, release the software with the open uh, software license, and then try to uh, get money from this system in other ways. And we know there are other strategies. So. Other questions? I think that microphone works better. Okay. Oh, okay. I can help. Yes. Hello. Uh, have you considered using Apache Kafka for the streaming data? So, what's the difference between uh, Grafna and Apache Kafka for streaming data? Uh, so could you repeat, please? Uh, you, there's also an open source solution for streaming data called Apache Kafka. Have you considered using ah. that for your streaming data? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. We in the new architecture we are uh, we will use Kafka. We are using Kafka to managing uh, messages. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Quick one. It was uh, nice to see uh, the IST uh, as the SOS server. Um, so, uh, the sensor observation service, um, will you continue to keep using this, or are you considering uh, something you also like uh, sensor things? Or is it good to stay with SOS? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you would like to have interoperability, SOS, uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, so we will uh, keep uh, uh, to develop uh, its source, of course, to maintain it. But new developments, I think, in the future will be on East STA, because in its source we uh, bring there all many features. Uh, so it's, it is, uh, it is uh, used for managing our meteorological network of the Canton. So the development of that software will continue, of course. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Daniel. We need to stop here, but uh, of course, he's reachable. Please approach him for questions. Thanks. <laughs>